Let's check out questions five through eight. These are questions I put in the category mold slash stoichiometry from the three 2015 New York State Chemistry Regents exams. So questions one through four I explained in another video. Now we're going to check out five through eight. All right, well, let's start out with number five here. It's asking which quantity is equal to one mole of gold. Okay, so one mole you know is a quantity. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Also for a gas, it would be equal to molar volume, 22.4. And of course, one mole of any substance is equal to the gram formula mass, also known as the molar mass of a substance. Well, it has another name. When you're dealing with just a plain old element like gold, it's also known as atomic mass because all we're dealing with is the atoms of, in this case, gold, which is the answer. So five is choice one. Atomic number, that can't be the answer. That would just be protons. Mass of neutrons in number, uh, number three or choice three, and then neutrons again in four. So the only logical choice there for question five, I think, is choice one. Let's move on to question six. With question six, we're back to a mole-mole problem, just like Question three was a mole-mole problem, and let's take a look. So we have a balanced equation, and it says according to this equation, what is the mole ratio? So mole ratio. So right away, cross out one and cross out choice three. Then it's just reading it. It's oxygen to methane. In other words, oxygen over methane. A mole ratio, you find a mole ratio by just looking at, with the balanced equation, the coefficients, meaning the numbers in front. So for oxygen, there are two moles, and then for methane, one mole. So it's a two to one ratio based on the way the question is worded, which is choice four. Let's move on to cho uh, question seven. Once again, this is the second time in 2015 with the multiple choice, we see a percent composition by mass question. Now remember, there is that percent composition by mass equation, part over the whole times 100 is equal to percent. Let's take a look and see how we can apply that. All right, let me get rid of this. So here we have, we're looking for the percent by mass of sulfur, but we're looking for the greatest percent by mass of sulfur. And we have four compounds. We have barium sulfide, we have calcium sulfide, we have magnesium sulfide, and we have strontium sulfide. So they're all one-to-one -one ratio, okay? So if I was going to calculate the percent for each one, right, the part would be the sulfur's gram formula mass of 32, which is over here. And then what would I need? I need the whole thing which for barium sulfide means I'm going to divide by the mass for barium plus sulfur. So 32 plus for barium, which is down here. Okay, I think it's 137. It's hard for me to see without my glasses. So I would take 32. Let me find a calculator here. You should be doing the same thing. Plus 137. Yeah, it's 169. So 169 times 100. And you're going to get a percent. So 32 divided by 169 times 100, it's about 19% for barium. I go to calcium, and I'm going to do the same thing. Remember, it's always 32, because it's only to 1 to 1. Then it's going to be calcium plus the sulfur. So if I go back and I get calcium, calcium is 40. 40 plus 32 is 72 times 100. And here I'm going to get 44%, I believe. Just check it with the calculator. Magnesium and sulfur. Magnesium, if we go back, is 24. 24 plus 32 is uh, 56. So it's 32 over 56 times 100, which is like 57%. And then finally for strontium, strontium is here in the middle. Okay, a strontium plus... Um, the sulfur, I think it's 120, so it's like 32 over 120 times 100, which is about 
I think it's 27%. So the greatest percent composition is going to be for the magnesium sulfide. Now, you could have just looked at the periodic table and saw magnesium was the highest on the periodic table, but also the lowest mass. And that would mean, because they're all with sulfur, that you would get the highest percentage here with magnesium sulfide. It's up to you. You could reason it out, find it on the table, look at that trend, or do the math for each one to make absolutely sure. And make sure you're answering the question, which is, which compound has the greatest percent composition by mass of sulfur? All right, let's move on to question eight. Question eight, we're looking at mass, and we're looking at density, and we're asked to find volume, but we're really actually not asked to find have the volume calculated, but the significant figures. Well, let's go over some sig fig rules. When anytime you have a measurement, any value other than zero is considered significant. It's the zeros that could either be placeholders or actually part of the measurement. It's real simple. When you have a number greater than one and you have a decimal point, just like 80.01, all four are significant. Then I go to 2.70. Again, number greater than one decimal point, they're all significant. Now, that significant figure-wise, if I'm going to go ahead and calculate volume, I'm using the density equation. I have the mass, I have the density, I'm looking for volume. If I rearrange it, volume is equal to mass divided by density, meaning I'm dividing. When you divide, you plug it in the calculator, but you have to round to the least num number of significant figures, which is three. That's for division and multiplication, and that's the answer that they wanted. Addition and subtraction, you round by the least number of decimal spaces. This is the last four questions from the multiple choice of the 2015 New York State Chem Regents exams. Keep working hard. Go over questions again, ones that you got wrong, even ones you got right. Keep working hard. Do as much as you can, and good luck.